Hello you bunch of tankers, today's video features the tier 7 medium, the Leo with the 100mm gun. One game's going to be live comms, one's going to be pre-recorded, but first we'll head into the garage and we'll have a look at her. Ah, the lovely, lovely Leo. Tier 7, Swedish medium. Probably some of the best camouflages in the game in my opinion on the Swedish tanks. They do look absolutely fantastic. And, you know... Listen, it's it's a cute little medium. It's it's fairly mobile, but it's got a lovely, lovely hard hitting gun with three hundred alpha. It's it's just a fun little thing. Now, I was kind of inspired by this to play this tank uh, by Petty's recent video a few weeks back, where he was out demonstrating the uh, hundred mil gun on the Leo, and I was much like him pre six point oh. I would run this thing with the seventy five mil. That is just. How I played it, mainly because it played like a Comet, and I absolutely love the Comet. So, I always thought I'd done quite well in this. Statistically, though, I'd done rather shite, so I decided to go back, try it with the 100, and... Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely, definitely a much better tank now. It was very, very derpy pre-6.0. Now it's, uh... I believe... It is 0.33. Let's go into the gun... And it is, yeah, 0 0.33 accuracy now. Obviously, I've got the commander in this. I will be putting the commander skills in the description again, much like the other videos I've been doing recently. And also, the chapters are down there, so you can skip any sections. Just get to the battles if you want to. But yeah, 0.33, 7 half rounds per minute, uh, 300 alpha. Pennant, 155, that's on the AP. It's, I believe, 194 on the APCR. Yes, it is. So, T9 gauge, you are going to end up using more... APCR unless you can get yourself in that good flanky position and that's where this tank excels much like a lot of these older mediums That's where you need to be. There is no armor on this thing As you can see 71 mil and that is 70 mil on the turret face and the turret face yes, it's got a slope to it but You're not really stopping anything. This is definitely not a tank where you go Oh, if I get hull down, I'll be okay. No, you won't you won't you really, really won't. This is a tank where you need to be flanking. You need to be getting side shots. Flanking and spanking. That's that's how we're going to term it. Flanking and spanking. Because you do need to get in side shots. Weak spots. So you need to be making sure that you are aiming in properly with it. Like I say, 0.33. Nothing to be sniffed at these days. But it can derp on you. And I, I do will stress it can derp on you. You need to be aiming this thing in. And that's why positioning with this tank is such an important part of its playstyle. You have got 10 degrees of gun depression to play with. That, to me, is one of the most important statistics on a tank. I've recently started going down the Czech Heavy line on the Tier 7 VZ. The lack of gun depression there drives me insane. Very, very, very insane. I need gun depression to function. It's as weird as that sounds. But, you know, I am just a blueberry, so that's kind of my skill level, isn't it? And, but, yeah, 60 mile an hour, uh, 60 kilometer an hour forward speed, a lovely 20 kilometer an hour reverse speed. Like I say, it is a fairly mobile vehicle, this. And it's very low and it's very small. So it's quite nice to get yourself little, little death lades and stuff where you can keep yourself hidden until you are ready to fire. Because with that reload being slightly longer than that 75 mil, you know, you ha it gives you that chance to just back off. Stop, look at the map, let it reload, and push yourself back out. Like I say, 2.71 second aim time. Like I say, you have got to let this thing aim in. You have, you cannot just go spamming shots off like there's no tomorrow. Because it doesn't like it. And it, it will let you know it doesn't like it by not hitting the target that you are aiming at. Now, equipment-wise, I am running optics to see further. I'm running vents to boost everything. Because you can't run vertical stabilizer on this tank. I run the vents, I just want to boost everything, get the aim time down, get the view range up, get the reload time. You know, all them things that I need. I'm also running an advanced loader to get that loading time a little bit lower down. Uh, you could maybe swap out vents for camo. Maybe. Gun lane drive if you felt like it. But personally, this is the setup I've run on it. I ran this with the 75mm as well. And I've I've never had an issue. I've, I've always enjoyed it. That's just my play style I suppose but this is the tank I do enjoy I do enjoy 35 rounds of ammunition is quite low and I won't lie to you it is quite low but 
recently what I've been finding, and I've mentioned this in another video as well, Tier 7 right now is the place to be. The matchmaking in Tier 7 right now, as everyone tries to dodge Tier 10 and the Avries and the Tyrans and all the other toxic crap they've placed in the top tier, people are trying to avoid that. Tier 7 matchmaking is like plus one, minus one right now. It is incredible how long you can play for and never see a Tier 9 game. And that is why right now you're just finding me playing Tier 7 tanks. Pretty much. Obviously, I'm spattering in some other stuff as well, but it's just more fun. It's just more fun. And you will see that now. Like I say, we've got two battles. One will have live commentary on. One is pre-recorded. I am dabbling in the live comms a lot more now just from watching War Thunder content creators. I just feel it brings more energy to a video and it's more real. It's more real. One of the games is an ace tanker. Um, you will see me die in that because... We don't all survive all of the time and do incredible games. And I do see a lot of content creators getting stick for only putting up games where they do amazing and they live to the end. There's a good reason for that, because you can't learn anything from a dead player. But I thought it was quite a nice game, so I decided to keep it in there. But anyway, that's enough of me waffling. Let's go into the games and have some fun. We got Siegfried Line. It is a tier 7 game. It's Encounter. At least he's not assault. Yeah, alright, Siegfried. Uh, I was never really a huge fan of Siegfried line, uh, even back in the day. It does look a, a, quite a bit nicer now after the rework, but... Um, not something I'm going to be thinking about. Still got the lag there, which is pretty bad. Artie's looking our way. We're going to make a move. Oh, yes. We're going to make a move. Have we got one light tank? There we go. KV1S. Hopefully he can come back out again. There we go. Oh, yeah, that's a juicy target, right? There is quite a lot of... You can see the delay between me getting shots and uh, the actual ribbon coming off. Ooh. Oh, yeah, yeah. The field's never a good place to be, guys. You know, unless you've got pretty damn good... Um... <laughs> Camo, it's never a great place to be. Still on a reload. Lost him. Hopefully he's going to come out the other side. Go engine down. And that's the field cleared. Just shy of 2k damage from that first intervention. Oh, yeah. I really like the G1R. It's such a fun tank. That 105mm dirt gun on it, it really is a lot of fun. First kill. Oni is still back there. Here we go. Oh, that now that is a scary gun. Miss him. Unfortunately, would have been nice to get a shot into that. See if we need to spot some more. Up. That Oni going to push forward. Yep. All right. Now we are lit up, but that 152 still on the run, which is fantastic news for us. We're gonna push, we're gonna push, push, push. Alright, we're gonna have to go for the base, I think. While everyone else pushes forward, I think what we're gonna do is make a, a little beeline for the base. If I can get a shot on that 152 now, I'd be happy, but he's been too behind the building. Now, they're light tanks down here as well, it's a stinger. But what we wanna do here, <coughs> try and get through and get some shots on this medium. Wherever he is. Where is he? He's got to be behind this building, surely. Yeah, there he is. It's a Comet. It's got a great reload. He's missed two. He's not going to miss a third, surely. Oh, he is. We're going to pop the food now.
Now, he can chip into us quite easily, but, you know, we've got friends. Oh, we waste our shot there. Unfortunately, I pressed the trigger. Thanks to the uh, delay that I've got currently. Hey, Rod 3353 damage. We've got 1200 assisted. This man really wanted Vader in his way. Hello. Oh, got it. And there we go. Not a bad game at all. C3485M, probably AFK back in the base, to be honest with you. I mean, we did have some aiming at us when we were pulling round. Um, but, I mean, there he is, yeah. I think he might be AFK, that guy. But I don't think we're going to get to him. Nah, there we go. Game over. But not a bad game at all in the 100cm. No. 100mm. 10cm. Only one kill, but we pick up a nice bit of damage, and we do get first place in the team. Only a first class, puts us over 70%. But yeah, that's, that's not a bad game at all, really. Um, on to another one. Right, Seatville Ridge, Tier 8 game. Like I say, Tier 7 matchmaking has just been fantastic recently. Really, really good. Now, this is the pre-recorded... Uh, commentary, obviously. Pretty, pretty obvious. It's not live. Now, what we're going to do in this... The Leo is fairly mobile, so what we're going to do is try and get ourselves to a decent location where we can put the gun to work without putting ourselves in too much danger. You know, it is an encounter game. It is a focal central point. So we're going to push down to E9, get ourselves up to the windmill. Gives us that chance to get side shots. It gives us that chance to duck away and let that sixth sense go away uh, so we can relocate. And that's kind of the thing with, with these older mediums. That's that's what it's all about. It's, it's the shoot, scoot. That's that's how you want to be playing them. Now here comes the Lycan. Unfortunately, does spot me up, but and we do we do miss his shot. But um, I'd give that a nine out of ten for the landing. That was a really nice bit of uh, acrobatics for us there. Thank you very much. And now we're going to continue our push. So. We're going up this hill, like I say, a lot of things are going to be aiming for the centre of the map because that's just how a lot of players are. Let's go and cap out in the first two minutes. And I want to be up here to take advantage of that. Uh, there's a lot of bush cover up here as well. Uh, T and H, which not paying any attention to us. But using these bushes and this ability to duck back down in the hill, it, it leaves us um, a little bit less vulnerable than we normally would be. The other beauty of this area as well is if you can get up here early game like we have, uh, there's a good chance you can spot their artillery, which is kind of why I'm pushing. Now we see the tracer fire come out there, and we're just going to take a random gamble shot. Always look for artillery tracers. If you're in an area where you think they're going to be, <coughs> take a second, have a look where they are, and just have a bit of an educated guess. And that is one sky pig out of the game already, and he was not expecting that at all. Which is great news for me. You know, TNH is more interested in the mediums that have already flagged. So what we're going to do now is, is try and get some nice shots into his engine deck, top of his turret. You know, the nice squishy, squishy stuff we're definitely going to penetrate. Go for the turret roof. There we go. That now puts him down to a one shot. And the AMX M445. It does get into us. We overexpose ever so slightly. I did see him flash up for a little bit, but I didn't really pay him much attention. Um... Looking at how much damage he's taken away from us, I'd say he's using the 90 mil. Um, and he's, if he's using the 105, he definitely isn't using the APCR because the colour of the tracer that came in. Now over here we've got a Dreadnought, and I believe there is a Challenger as well. And again, this is why we're sat behind this bush. So we're trying to keep ourselves sort of more camo than we, we can naturally get from the tank. So sitting behind the bush when we're taking shots, just it lowers that footprint that we have. Gives us a chance of getting more shots on target without getting spotted. Unfortunately, Challenger does back behind cover. He did see me uh, swim across air off him there, uh, just to try and cancel out the targeted on him. Sometimes people get complacent once the targeted goes, and they'll stop in the open. You get some shots on. Them. It's, it's usually uh, it's my theory behind it anyway. Um, so we're pushing the mid. Most of their team look like they're pushing down the one-two line. So. We, we, we do need to be getting a little bit closer now. We are up on numbers, and the herd is thinning out a little bit, but um, we still need to be wary about, you know, only 864 hit points. Um, and there's a lot of tanks out there who can do a lot of damage to us. 
do aim a little bit too low on the AMX M445, so we do only do tracking damage, a bit of a shame. Um, and we're only on 1500 damage right now. So, we're, you know, gonna just take our time, make sure we're getting our shots on target, make sure we're, we're doing things right to get that uh, the damage up, get these tanks gone so we can win the match. Unfortunately, the Challenger seems to hesitate there. Well, unfortunately for him, the Challenger seems to hesitate. Doesn't get the shot on us, but we do get hit in the bum. Possibly that A44 that's down there. Not too sure. Now, the Dreadnought's fired, so we do push on him for a shot. But then this VZ appears. And whilst the Dreadnought can't fire, we may as well get a shot into that VZ. Try and keep him lit up so we can get some spotting damage. The Dreadnought, though, he is the main concern. He can one-shot me. So that is a really, really scary uh, tank that's buried down us right now. I hit him dead square in the gun mantlet. But thankfully, he rushes in a little bit too hard and derps his shot. So we're just going to do the old circle of death on this guy. Um, and look how fast that turret traverses compared to my hull. The, the Dreadnought's turret traverse is actually pretty good considering the size of the gun and the size of that turret. That's not bad. We shut him down, and now that's given us a clear area. We have got that VZ still down there, but he's not really paying any attention to me whatsoever. So we're just going to leave him be. There's enough tanks down there to deal with him, um, and we're going to try and get some shy side shots into this Tiger P. So we get one into him, get lit up. I knew we were going to get lit up, which is why we instantly back behind this cover. You know, we don't want to get hit by that. We are now a one-shot to him. 240 Alpha on that 88 mil gun, so we just got to play it very, very carefully. Now he gets gone, and the uh, 5100 is a one-shot. Now I'm thinking, hey, right, okay. He's a one-shot. If I can get in behind him, get a shot before he has a chance to turn around, that's it. It's happy days. We're on 3,241 damage already. Only 948 assists, but, you know, it could be worse. Now that really irritated me, because I should be able to go up there. I've managed to get up the rocks. And yet they put these artificial walls in. And that's something that's really irritated me about this map since getting it back. It's not being able to go up to places it used to be able to go. So we're into the final hurdle. We've got a 5100. There's only two tanks left. I am a one shot, but I think, do you know what? It looks like he's moving around. Who cares? Let's go. And I don't press the button fast enough. The 5100 does. And I get absolutely taken down. Now, unfortunately, the, the light tank that was with me seems kind of oblivious as to what's going on. Bit of a shame. It would have been nice if he'd come with me to shut that 5100 down a little bit quicker, but, you know, this is this is life, isn't it? It's the way it goes. So, yeah, that's a uh, game for me, unfortunately. We do win, though. And I'll give you a spoiler alert. We do win. And, yes, even though I die in this game, I... I I really wanted to put it up there because I just thought it was quite an interesting game and like I said before, to be honest with you, I just enjoy making the videos so anything that seems half decent, I'm going to put out there. So anyway, let's spin on to the end and see how we do. Yes, it was a win. We do quite well. Oh look, CDC. Mm. Yes, so 3,241 damage, 948 assist, giving us the ace tanker. That puts us up 73%. Not really going for marks anymore, but, you know, we do have a really, really nice game in the wonderful little Leo. Well, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. If you did, give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And until the next time, whenever that is, I'll see you all soon.